The GPS DairyCast features the high-value insights of the GPS Dairy Consulting Team's trusted advisors and the owners and managers from the elite dairy farms they serve. These conversations deliver on the GPS Dairy Consulting promise to inspire change and grow leaders. Welcome to this GPS Dairy Cast. I'm Peggy Coffin from the Up Level Dairy Podcast, serving as your host. And on this GPS Dairy Cast, we are joined by GPS Dairy Consultant team members Paul Dyke, Nathan Pukowski, and Andre Pereira. Welcome, gentlemen, to the GPS Dairy Cast. Hello, Peggy. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks for having us today. So for our listeners out there that perhaps haven't had the privilege of meeting the three of you, just take a moment. Let's go around the table here. And I want you to just introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, and if there's an area that you specialize in the way that you serve dairy producers as a GPS dairy consultant. Nathan, do you want to kick us off? Absolutely. My name is Nathan Pukowski, GPS dairy nutrition and management consultant here in Michigan. And when we talk about things that I specialize in, one of the areas is probably this feed fit assessment. It's a pretty a passionate thing for me and, and definitely a big piece of the, of the picture as we look at you know what we're doing on dairies today. Excellent. Well, welcome, Nathan. Andre, go ahead and introduce yourself. Thank you, Peggy. My name is Andre Pereira. I am a GPS nutrition management consultant here in Minnesota, Iowa, and South Dakota. So it's a good region here. And I'd say my specialty is more on efficiency and trying to to grab those last little efficiencies from the animals and try to make the best out of them. Excellent. And Paul? Yeah, I'm I'm Paul Dyke. I'm a consultant with GPS in Wisconsin. I do a little bit of Michigan and I'll go a little of other places, but mostly in Wisconsin. My specialty for a long time has been TMRs and feeding and, and training feeders and just how to get the whole process running smoothly. So it's been a passion of mine for a long time. Well, not only are the three of you nutritionists, but you each have a particular passion and area of expertise that relates back to efficiency and feed and really having a handle on what's going on, not just with the ration, but all the way to the bunker and right in front of the cow. And so what we're going to be focusing on today is something that you had just alluded to, Nathan, and that was the feed fit assessment that GPS has come up with as a way to really serve dairy producers and helping them have an extra set of eyes on their dairy and an extra set of eyes that can see opportunities to capture extra value and hopefully some extra pounds of milk too. So why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about what is this feed fit assessment? Yeah, the feed fit assessment is a, a pretty in-depth assessment. Uh, that we, we go through on a dairy. It involves putting up cameras over over pens, looking at the mixer wagon with a GoPro. Some of, the, of my colleagues or other industry reps that come in and help us might have a drone that they use as well to look at it. But it's it's trying to get a handle on what's going on in the dairy. You know, we, we tend to think that, oh, well, everything's working perfect. We find out when we do one of these feed assessments that it's not so perfect. Yeah, we think cows are getting fed on time every day. We find that they're without feed for two hours. And the comment is with lockup times, hey, there's no way my cows are locked up for, for two hours. And we find that sometimes they are and things just slip every once in a while. And we have to kind of bring it back to the basics. And it's real easy to go in and, and say these things that, that they're happening, but having the, the pictures, having the videos to be able to show people and educate people and help them understand why is why we do this. And this is how we get the next pound of milk. It's it's not from a ration. These little things, correcting and fixing these little things is where it happens. So so really what I'm hearing from you, Nathan, is what the feed fit assessment does is it allows you to be able to show the producer what's going on in the dairy and not just what they think is going on, but what's really going on in real time through the use of video and photography to be able to take what's happening and to assess what's going on, whether that's feed delivery or push-ups or lock-up times. And so I'm really interested to hear from the three of you of how you have personally used this assessment with the clients that you serve and what you have uncovered and discovered that's been able to help producers 
for one, heighten their own awareness of what's really truly going on on their dairies when they aren't there because they, they can't be 24 hours a day, right? So let's hear, gentlemen, what are you seeing? What are you discovering and uncovering through the use of these cameras in multiple locations around the dairy? I think we've probably modified this process many times throughout the last few years. I mentioned some of it with lockup times and cows being out of feed. We can go into a feeding program and we can look at some things, but feeding programs sometimes can be cheated a little bit. You can't cheat the camera. You can't cheat the GoPro. That kind of really helps you understand what are the mixing RPMs on the mixer wagon. We'll find where RPMs aren't really where they they need to be to adequately mix the, the mix appropriately. And another thing that we just started doing, and I'll let you speak to this, Paul, because this is something that you put together for us, is doing an in-depth analysis of taking some samples of a TMR and really understanding how does it look like when it gets in front of the cow versus what we're seeing on the computer. So what's the fiber levels in it? What's the starch level, sugar levels? Does it really match up? And that's not just taking one sample. We take multiple samples across the bunk. We put it into a nice little graph that helps us graph all these individual nutrients, and we can really really see some things there. So I talked about it a little bit, Paul. I don't know if you want to share some more. It's the idea of quality control on dairies and quality control on on, on TMRs. When you think about it, when you have a cheese plant, what are they doing constantly back in the lab? They're testing every batch, every so many batches. They're looking to see if their cheese is consistent. One of the things we haven't done on farms very well is we haven't really tested the, the, the product of the feed center. We, we test all the ingredients going in, but sometimes we don't test the ingredients coming out. And the, and the ingredients coming out or the product coming out is the TMR. So can we test that TMR to make sure it matches what our computer says, to match, make sure it matches what our rationist says it's going to be, and, and does that match? And it's really, sometimes you, you go, well, it should match if we put all the specs in correctly up front, but not always. Sometimes things happen, like there's, there's an ingredients off, there's a scale that's off, there's a mixing error, there's something that's off with our mixing procedures. So we need to take maybe five to 10 samples coming out of the, T- out of the TMR and send them off to the lab, get the nutrient analysis, go a little bit farther than just the Penn State shaker box, go beyond the basics, try to get really to, is the zinc, manganese, copper, sugar, starch, fiber, are all those things consistent? And if they're not, then let's go back to that TMR mixer, back to the ingredients, and, and try to dissect what the problem is. But it's not just a one-time thing. It's, 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 it's a little bit about a process and, and a commitment to quality over time. How do we put a quality control program within our feeding system? And Paul, I really I like how you considered this part of a quality control program. And when you introduced yourself to this podcast, one of the things you mentioned right off the bat was that TMR is something you're passionate about, something that you've really spent a lot of time in just wanting to see that for producers, that that is one of those key components that they can use to really move their dairy forward. What have you found? Anything that surprised you as you've really been able to look at these different aspects of that that process of getting feed from the bunker and in front of the cow and whether that is looking at what's on paper and then holding that next to what you see on a camera. You know, I I think what's amazing is that we all think that these mixers are designed to mix well, but they're selling a piece of steel and sometimes it mixes well and sometimes it doesn't. I think the key manufacturers have really focused on getting those mixers to mix well, but it's surprising to me that Sometimes the producers get this brand new mixer and they're not sure what the RPM should be on the tractor to get enough rotations on the augers within that mixer. I've had challenges with triple screws. I I find they're very difficult to load correctly every time. The number of mixers that I've seen that are triple screws that mix well is pretty few. They're hard to load correctly and get to mix correctly. So it's, it's often about just understanding are we, are we just running the mixer correctly? And I get it, the manufacturers have a, have a formula, this is how it should run. And sometimes I, I think the manufacturer recommendations aren't quite right. And so it's trying to make sure that, that we get a consistent load and then go out there and hey, we test it, we got a problem, coming back to the farm, fix that mixing procedure, and then remix. 
And that might mean putting liquids in to the mix earlier. It might mean putting a bit of a mix time after a hay ingredient. It could be adding straw first. There's like 12 different things that you can do to mess this mixing procedure up. But over time, you get an idea of, hey, here's the best management practices. Here are the things that really work on most dairies. And when I see a problem, we try to match it up with the, the video that Nathan alluded to with a GoPro or something else because that teaches the feeder and the producer and helps them understand what the problem is. So there's a lot of little things that can go into getting the mixing procedures right and making sure that the cows are, are seeing what we want them to see. And the power of that camera and the footage that you're able to gather from that, especially when you lay it next to the data that you have from other sources, that's really telling. And and what a powerful tool, not just for the producer, but for the feeder. And so Andre, let's switch over to you here. Tell us a little bit about what you are seeing and experiencing when you're out on dairies you work with and the power that cameras and videography have been able to bring into your role as you look for those efficiencies to help producers get those extra pounds of milk. I really like the comments from Paul and his examples there because a couple feed assessments that I've done, I've seen those in the video, I've seen those in the in the samples, right? So I'll give you an example. One of them, I got there early in the morning before the mixer was ready to do the, the, the final mix for a pre-mix. So this farm had a pre-mix that they make right in the morning, drop it off in the feed pad, and then they use corn silage, haylage, and pre-mix as their diet. It's just to simplify things and make sure they're efficient Fishing in the morning, the cows get fed quickly. But I got there the night before. I looked at the premix ready in that in that trailer, and I put the camera up. And as soon as I got there, right in the morning, when before they they were ready to do the the final mix in the morning for that premix, that final mix was never done. Mm -hmm. And there was probably a procedure here or there in the feed software that they skipped to not that do that final mix, but it was very interesting to see that the, the master mix got dropped. And then from the beginning of the mix to the end, there was a fiber difference, a very significant fiber difference. So right at the beginning, there was a high fiber content from that straw that was in the bottom versus the end had a high concentrate content. And not only in that pre-mix, the sample showed that, but also when I went to the barn and collected 10 samples out of the bunk, and measure from the beginning of the bunk to the end of the bunk, I also saw the same level of decrease in fiber. So there was something going on with the time of that final mix and that procedure step within that farm that we just had to, to uh, be very careful about and talk to the producer about. I know they're, they're doing a great job. They're working really hard every day, but sometimes just these little things get forgotten or they get mixed up and we just have to go back and let let's make sure that these are working another interesting example that i had was i put cameras up on this mixer that was dropping molasses as the last ingredient for their master mix and except that the mixer was in a an angle so you actually could see that the mixer was completely in an angle wasn't flat right so when the molasses was was dropping i could see that the molasses was just going to one side and one of the sides of the mixer was getting darker as the other side was not getting as dark from that molasses difference in concentration because of that uh, angle of the mixer right and you could tell that when they dropped that master mix in the pad to start feeding cows as well you could tell that there was a just a color difference between that drop and of course, the samples will tell you the same. So Andre, in those examples that you shared, where really you were able to pinpoint some pieces and parts of the process and system that weren't going the way that they should be, what was your next step? What were you able to do with that information? And not just information, but the video capture to go along with it. What were you able to do by having those pieces of information on hand to be able to bring that to the producer or other people that are part of that team on the dairy and help them see what was going on or uncover a problem and find a solution. How did that play out for you? Basically, you have to find out where is that step that's missing. So let's just say 
was that master mix from the first example I talked about, was that master mix supposed to be mixed at, at night before the drop in the morning? Or was it supposed to be mixed in the morning? So basically, I went back to the producers and opened the computer, opened the, so the, the, the feed software, the farm feed software, and looked at the procedures there and said, we noticed that the mix was supposed to be mixed at, in the morning, right before dropping a master mix, except that it was set up as the last thing to do at night. So there was a confusion there saying, should I do it at night or should I do it in the morning? And there was also a lack of communication with the feeder to explain this needs to be done. This needs to get done at one point. And why, why is it not getting done? Mm -hmm. So that's the important part is just increase that communication and find out where is, what's the point that's missing. And Andre, in that example, you just shared truly what you uncovered as a piece of something that wasn't going well in the process ended up being a conversation about a bigger issue and challenge that was going on. And that was with communication among people. GPS Dairy Consulting goes beyond nutrition by offering tools and resources, broad multidisciplined experience, and a collaborative philosophy across a range of consulting services that will make your business more successful. How will GPS consultants do that? By collaborating with you and your team to solve challenges and create successes while achieving sustainable and profitable results. By fostering personal growth and leadership development. And by inspiring continuous change and improvement in your people, systems, and results. GPS Dairy Consulting LLC will go beyond nutrition to help you achieve your most challenging goals. Learn more and connect with a GPS consultant at gpsdairy.com. Paul and Nathan, have you had similar experiences where you've been able to take what you found through FeedFit assessments and what you're bringing forward to that operation isn't just troubleshooting on something specific in the feed area, but ends up being part of a bigger picture of maybe a bigger challenge that you are then able to help that dairy address? Kind of similar to what Andre was talking about there, I, I had a mixer that basically the gears, it's supposed to shift to a higher gear and it wasn't doing that. So we were thought we were obtaining the right RPM to the tractor looked good, but we weren't looking at what was going on or the feeders weren't. And they got a lot of things going on, like we've talked about. Sometimes some things get mixed and that's our, missed and that's our job to come in and help them out there. So in this case, we had to go through the programming in the box inside the cab for that mixer and fix it. Another thing that I found, it's not necessarily related to a GoPro or anything, but in along the same lines is we ended up finding that there was some communication errors with employees and how they feed waybacks. And so the waybacks were getting fed to, were getting fed to, do it, to a group that shouldn't have received the waybacks or weren't being accounted for. So when we go and we start looking at that, we start to say, okay, well, our feed efficiencies um, aren't adding up here. And why is that? And it had to do with the wayback that was being missed and, and, and not accounted for. So once again, an example that's so powerful of discovering something that ended up being part of a bigger challenge that you were able to then help that particular customer address and overcome. And Paul, have you had situations like this too, where what you were able to see through the eyes of camera and video translated into a change that was positive for one of your clients? So sometimes we go through a, a barn and we say, man, I can tell and I can visually see a difference in that TMR from one end of the barn to the other. And Andre's example of a master mix not looking consistent from one end to the other, it, it can happen. But I've had situations where I go through that barn and, and I look at that TMR and I go, wow, it looks pretty consistent from one end of the barn to the other. And then I get my nutrient analysis back and I go, wow, the, cro the protein really drops from one end of that mix to the other. And you go, well, does that matter? Well, sometimes if you've got a lot of times we feed two pens so we're going to feed pen one and pen two and pen one is getting protein that's about 17 and a half and pen two is getting 15 and a half the one pen is getting overfed and one pen is getting underfed even from one end to the pen to the other it's not consistent 
And when I've seen this is so you look at that TMR and you go, man, it looks really good. And then you can go back to the video because we, we don't really want to perch ourselves above mixers for safety reasons. We really want to have some sort of GoPro or something to be able to, to watch that video. And, and on this one that I'm thinking about, there was only about a two and a half inch error in terms of that tractor being level. So it wasn't quite level. So from one end to the other, two and a half to the center. So maybe five inches all the way across. What you think about it, it's not very much. And you go, could that really make a difference? So when we go back and we look at that video and we see all the grains being added, and if you look carefully, you can kind of see that the back of the mixer is a little bit fuller than the front of the mixer. And then they come in and they dump corn silage at the end, just like everybody does. And what you realize is the grain on the, on the third screw or the back screw is, is gonna be higher in concentration than the front screw. You can't see it visually, but the, the nutrient analysis tells you that there's a difference. And you go, well, doesn't this farmer know that this, this mixer should be level? He's probably been a very good farm. He sh he's known this. Everybody's told him this. Your mixer needs to be level. And yet when you kind of talk to him, two things happened. The, one dairy had a problem where they, they had a different tractor on, and another one had a problem where they actually got new tires on their tractor. So you think about the new tires, it's a couple inches more in terms of tread, and you go, can that make a difference? Well, it, I said it was two and a half inches. And so you think about when you put new tractors on, or you fix your tractor, or you put on new tires, or if there's snow in the ramp that you're, you're, you're mixing, anything that makes that mixer a little unlevel. And some of those things you can't even predict, like you go, oh, we had some gravel spill, or we had some feed spill in our feed space, and all of a sudden, over time, it gets to be a few inches, or, or gravel builds up, or snow and ice builds up somewhere, and all of a sudden, that mixer isn't level anymore, and everybody thought they were doing a great job, and then you see the results, the QC work, you see the lab results come back, you go, man, I'm way overfeeding this one pen, and I'm underfeeding this other pen, that's not consistency. That's not uh, world-class feeding management. We need to be more consistent than that. So for me, those kind of situations are a lot of fun. You can look at the lab results, you can look at the video, and then you make some changes and then you redo the process. And then all of a sudden you go, wow, everything's really consistent after that. And that's, and maybe you won't see five pounds of milk in the tank, but that's how we go from 95 to 97 or 97 to 100 pounds or uh, of fluid milk. That's how we really push these dairies to the next level is paying attention to those small details. Paul, you hit it on the head so hard here too, is sometimes it's those little details that the dairy producer who has a lot of other things that they are looking at on a daily basis from where milk markets are at to every other cost factor that's involved on the dairy and employees. But the uniqueness and the value that you bring to the table, you and Nathan and Andre is really being not just a second set of eyes to look for the little details, but truly a second set of experts expertise, as well as genuine care and wanting to help these dairies achieve the level of excellence that they desire. And you've outlined these different aspects of the feed fit assessment and how utilizing cameras and video has really revealed where these little details might be a little bit undone. And you're able to take that information to the producer, to the feeder, and, and really create the opportunity for them to work with you to find the solutions. And so as we've talked about this part of feed fit assessment today is just really gathering this information uh, through the capture on the video cameras, the GoPros. Is there anything that we've missed that you want to share with producers out there and others that are listening about the feed fit assessment? I think we can't forget about the cow as well, right? And the time budget that the cows have by themselves. That's what I meant here is cows have that time budget. They have four to five hours to eat in a day. They have those 10, 10 or 12 hours to, to rest and ruminate that day. And in between, they're going to the parlor, they're walking around, they're socializing, they're drinking water. So it's thinking about how they react to the environment they have. So if you're mixing feed and in one side of the pan you have high protein feed and the other side of the pan you have a low protein feed, think about the shy cows. Those cows that are not gonna be the first ones to get up and go eat. They're always gonna get the low protein feed. 
because they're gonna go to the other side of the barn that looks a little more fiber that the, that diet looks like it has a little more fiber cows can usually distinguish that with their nostrils they have a lot of sensitivity for that so that chai cow may not get enough feed so we i feel like we just have to think about the cows they don't lie they'll tell us what's right what's wrong and we just have to follow their time budget. Oh, what a great point, Andre. Thank you for adding that in, the the cow's perspective to this conversation. And Nathan and Paul, final thoughts. What else would you like listeners to know about the feed fit assessment? Yeah, I think this is a taste of what it all entails. It's pretty in-depth. And as a nutritionist, we'll fall into a trap sometimes and we'll go, oh, we're down on milk. We're getting pressure from the, the producer. And it's really easy to go to your computer, to go to your diet and start looking for things. Well, I should switch this around and I should, a lot of the times that just makes it worse. And big picture things like the, the, the mixing, what's happening in the barn, what's happening in the parlor, how are these cows being moved, being handled? That's where it's at. And by going in there and looking at those things management wise, that didn't cost the dairy producer anything. It just cost our time and some of his time to walk through the barn together and really identify these things, whether it's putting up a camera and looking through a, a camera or the mixer wagon. But that's where the rubber meets the road for me. And, and that's where I've I've found the majority of the problems to be. The ration, the run of the ration and, and modifying that, that's just, that's a lost cause. There's some things that we have to do, right? But the big picture, this is this is where it's at. What a great reminder, Nathan, of the, the many factors that go into really just making sure cows are getting the right amount of feed at the right time, the way that it's intended to be in front of them. And and that's what you're doing with this feed fit assessment is doing that, but taking it to an entirely new level and adding some value added services along with it. And Paul, final thoughts from you. This is a process, feed management improvement, quality control. It's not like you can do this in one day. It takes a while. One of the examples, I, I always like to do these time-lapse cameras and you do an entire week. And it's always interesting because the first day or two when the employees know the camera's up there, boy, they do everything right. But it's hard to do everything right for a week or 10 days in a row because what happens is if they do and they, they know about that, you've just created a habit. You've created the, the right things. And, and for example, push-ups. Everybody can do the push-ups right for one day. But when you start doing them for a week or 10 days in a row, that's all of a sudden where you see improvement. So when we look at cameras and we look at time-lapse cameras and we can watch it for an entire week or 10 days, that's when you kind of get an idea of what's really going on, what's happening on the weekend, what's happening today. And then if you do it in a month or two from now, again, you get to kind of do a, a checkup. Hey, how are things going in the middle of the night? So I think about a, the feed fed assessment as, yeah, it's a one day snapshot sometimes on our TMR mixing, Sometimes it's a longer term view of, hey, what's happening day to day to day and on weekends, but it's, it's continual improvement. We try to find small things that we can fix today, and then we say, what's next? What's next? What, what else are we missing? Where else can we improve? So for me, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. There's, al there's always one more thing to improve. Well, Paul, Andre, and Nathan, thank you for sharing your experiences and also your insights on using the FeedFit assessment as something that can do exactly what you just shared, and that's be part of a quality control program, be part of finding those little details and, and using them to help dairy producers achieve their goals on the dairy, looking for those little areas to just optimize efficiency, and sometimes even even uncovering what may be a bigger challenge that dairy is facing all because of the time and the energy and effort that you're putting into helping them do things right with that extra set of eyes at the times when a dairyman can't be everywhere seeing everything. And so with that, Thank you, gentlemen, for this conversation today, for giving us a snapshot of the FeedFit assessment. And as Nathan said, there's so much more to what this entails. And in fact, I think we'll be hearing about that again in the future here on the GPS Dairy Cast. But for those listeners that this conversation is really just piquing their interest, they're curious about what's going on on their own dairies, and they might even want to work with a GPS Dairy Consultant team member to help them 
capture those videos, capture those images, and ultimately capture that extra pound of milk, you can find the information in the show notes to connect with the GPS Dairy Consulting team. And so Nathan, Paul, Andre, thank you so much for jumping on to this GPS Dairy Cast. I'm Peggy Coffeen from the Up Level Dairy Podcast, and thanks for listening to the GPS Dairy Cast. The GPS Dairy Cast features conversations that deliver on the GPS Dairy Consulting promise to inspire change and grow leaders. If this GPS Dairy Cast has you looking for more ways to become an elite dairy producer, find more information in our show notes on how you can add a GPS advisor to your team.